Nothing. No comments, no question, no query. Are you guys all happy? Hi, Lizzie. Hi. Alistair here. Um, sorry, I missed the first three sessions. I had some difficulty getting online. Uh, um, that's why I'm joining you guys as of from today. Uh, just a quick question. The first three sessions, uh, is, is that recordings available or, or not? The recordings are available here on, on MS Teams if you have joined the channel. You are able to also check the, the recordings on the top banner. I will show you at the end of the session where to find the recordings. I do upload them there as well. And also they are available on my UNICEF. Okay. I will Thank also you. do that at the end of the session to show everybody where to find those recordings as well. Thank you so much. Okay. So if there are no questions or no queries or comments other than the one that uh, Hendrik posted online, he's happy. So I'm assuming that everybody is also happy. So we can continue with today's session. <clears throat> so let's first quickly recap on what we did on Wednesday. We looked at central tendency, the measures of central tendency, the measures of variation and the shape or distribution of your data. And we also looked at the quartiles and how we identify the five number summary and construct a box plot. Okay. So we said the mean is the most commonly used measure of central location. It is the average. Um, it is affected by the outlier. And if we calculate the mean of a sample, we use the X bar because it is a sample statistic. We always use the normal um, letters, like the normal known letters like X with a bar on top that gives us the sample mean. And it's the sum of all observation divided by how many they are. And also we can calculate the mean for the population, which we use uh, the population parameter mu for all the population parameters and uh, the sign is always represented by the Greek letters. So for the population mean, we use the mu and it's also the sum of all values divided by how many they are. We also looked at the median and we said the median is uh, your middle value. You have to sort your data, order your data from the lowest value to your highest value and the middle value from the asserted values is your median. Sometimes when you have even numbers like the count, when it's 10 values that they gave you or the data values, there are 10 of them from the sample of 10, then it is an even value. So therefore it means your median, median position will be in the middle of two values. What you do is you take the average of those two values and divide them by two. So you add the two values and divide by two. That is taking the average of the two values. And to find the middle value, we first use the position. And we know that that position the formula is n plus one divided by two. And the median is not affected by extreme values or outliers. We also looked at the mode and we said the mode is the value that appears more than the other values and we said the mode <coughs> with the mode there can be no mode because the numbers like they are one 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 they appear the same way or we can have a bimodal where we have two modes two numbers repeating more than the other numbers or we can have one mode where there is only one number that it is that is repeating more than the other numbers or we can have a multi mode or multimodal data set where there are multiple values, more than two values, which are multiple values that have or that are repeating more than the other values. <coughs> and we also see at the distribution of the data. 
Please make sure that you always mute yourself. So we looked at the distribution of the data where we said if the mean is less than the median, then your data is left skew or it is negatively skewed because the tail of your data is to the left. And we said it is symmetric when the mean and the uh, and uh, the mean and the median are equal. <laughs> then the data set is symmetric. We said it is right skewed of or left skewed. Oh, sorry, right skewed or positively skewed when the median is less than the mean, because the tail also is to the right. The measures of variation, we said there are the range, the variance, standard deviation, and the coefficient of variation. And we said the measures of variation tells us the spread or the dispersion of, or gives the dispersion of your data around the mean, uh, <clears throat> or the variability of your data around the mean. And we said the range is your largest value minus your lowest value, and we also looked at the standard deviation and the variance. We said the variance is your sum square deviation of your values from the mean. And we looked at the formulas for the sample variance, which is the statistic. We use S squared and is the sum of your observation minus the mean squared divided by N minus one. And for the population variance, we use sigma squared which is your sum of your observation minus the mean squared divided by n. And you should notice the difference between the two formula. One has n minus one and the other one just n. Then we also looked at the standard deviation and we said the standard deviation is the square root of your variance. And it shows you the variation of your data around the mean. And we said, because it is the square root of your variance, therefore the standard deviation for the sample statistic, it's represented by S, and for the population statistics, it will be represented by the sigma. The other thing we looked at was the coefficient of variation. Remember, we said we represent the coefficient of variation as a percentage. So it, your standard deviation as a percentage of your mean. Um, and we use the coefficient of variation to compare the variability of two data sets. Then we looked at the quartiles. We said the quartiles divide your data into four groups, but you need to order your data like we did with the median. You need to sort your data from highest to lowest from highest to lowest. Um, and in that way, you will be able to identify where 25% of the data falls with, 25% uh, of the data are less, they fall within quartile one, half of the data that are less than, or that are above um, quartile, quartile two, and 75% tile will represent by 75% of the data will be less than quartile three, and only 25% will be greater than uh, quartile three. Um, and we also looked at how we locate those positions or those quartiles, not the position, but the values. How do we identify those quartile values that will give us a guide in terms of where do we fit in the, quart the, the quartiles? And we said for finding the quartiles, values to find in the quartile values you need to first use the position to go find the position where that quartile is and to find quartile one position we use n plus one divided by four and to find quartile two we use n plus one divided by two and we said quartile two is the same as the median and that is why the position you use the same formula as the median to find the position of the quartile and to find the third quartile we find it on the position three multiplied by n plus one divided by four, where n is the value uh, of your sample size that you would be given. And then we also said we need to be mindful of the rules when we're looking at the position of the quartile by 
looking at the answer you get from the position, if the position of the quartile is a whole number, like three, four, five, six, seven, then the value that is located at that position will be your quartile. If it is a fractional, so your position answer is in a fractional, which is 0 0.5, then you're going to take the average of the two values and divide or taking the average of the two values, meaning you adding the two values that where the position is located, <clears throat> you average the two values or by adding the two values and dividing them by two. And if it's a non-fractional half, which is 0.25 is the answer that you get or 0.75. So when it's 0.25, we're going to estimate to say it is closer to the lowest. And so if it was 2.5, 2.25, therefore it means we're going to say if the position is at position two when we go look for the value on, on the table, but the position will still be 2.25, but we're going to locate the quartile value at position two. When it's 2.75, we're going to locate the position closer to three, so we're going to locate the position at three, but your position of that quartile will be at position 2.75 and then we use the estimate to get to three and that's how you will locate your quartiles and we also looked at when we do the quartiles there is what we call the interquartile range and your interquartile range is your quartile value one my, sorry your quarter the difference between quartile one and quartile two so it's your range of your highest quartile minus your lowest quartile. So it's quartile three minus quartile one, which will give you the spread uh, or the range of your data set. And we also looked at the five number summaries, which are maximum value, the, oh, sorry, the minimum value, which is the smallest value, quartile one, quartile two, quartile three, and quartile, uh, and the maximum value. And we also said from when you have the value of your quartile three and the value of quartile one, you are able to calculate interquartile eight. Not the position, but the actual value. You can calculate um, the interquartile range. And the five number summary makes up the box whisker or the box plot graph. Then lastly, what we looked at was to look at the distribution or the shape of your data based on the quartiles. And we said it can be left skewed when your quartile one minus the smallest value is bigger than your largest value minus your quartile three, then the data is left skewed. If your quartile one minus the smallest value is the same as your largest value minus quartile three, then it is symmetric. If you're right, uh, it's right skewed. If quartile one minus the smallest value is less than large, um, your largest value minus quartile three. So you need to know all these things that we discussed now in order for us to do the activities just now. So let's start with the activities. Um, so we're going to start the session today looking at everything that we did on Wednesday after we just did the recap. We're going to look at the activities and look at how we use our calculator, our scientific calculators to calculate the mean, the mean, the mean, the standard deviation and the variance. Okay. So, and welcome to those who just joined us. So, take out your calculators and we're going to calculate uh, that data set. Consider a sample of 12 monthly sales of bicycles sold by a bicycle dealer and the data is 10, 6, 5, up until 6, 6. We're going to calculate the mean of this data set, the variance of this data set, the standard deviation of this data set, and we're going to calculate the coefficient of variation. 
So everybody has a different calculator I'm going to assume. Some of you have the Sharp Business Financial Calculator EL738 or the latest one. I don't know the number for the latest one, but it is a Sharp calculator. Some of you has a Casio calculator that you are using. I'm going to show you with those both. If you have an HP calculator, unfortunately, I do not have the steps of an HP calculator. So can I get an indication of who has an HP calculator? OK, so there is nobody with an HP calculator. So I'm going to assume that the majority of you have a sharp calculator. OK, so. Or they have a Casio calculator. So you either have a Casio or you have a sharp calculator. It doesn't matter what 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 uh, a model of a calculator is, but I am going to start with those with a financial calculator. So let's do that. Anyone with a, a sharp business financial calculator? Unmute and let me know so that I don't have to. Okay, I can see Lungi Le says she has a Casio. How many people has a Casio? Just like Lungi Le or Hedrick's uh, number. It doesn't matter which fine uh, calculator you have. Just let me know. I just want to know which calculators you have quickly. Can I get that so that then I can use the same calculator that you have? for the session. Miss Lizzie, I'm using Acacia. Okay. I'm also using Acacia. Okay. She is using Sharp. You're using a Sharp calculator. Does it look like the one that I have in front there? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So those who are using Sharp, okay, we will use a Sharp or a Acacia. So I'm going to assume that those are the two calculators you have. Yes. So those with a sharp calculator, um, the steps that I have on the handouts are related to that calculator. So easy to follow. You need to put your calculator to a mode. So I'm first going to show those who are using a sharp calculator. So we're going to do with the sharp, then we move into Casio. I'm also going to demonstrate it online for you. Don't worry about it. Uh, but I want you to understand the steps. With all the calculators, we will need to put our calculator to state mode. Different calculator, different modes will appear or different, yeah, different functions to get to the mode, state mode. So for the sharp calculator, when you press mode, on your calculator, your mode should be somewhere on the CA button. It's M-O-D-E, the mode. Then there will be some words that come and say state or something and something and something. We need to press one for state. So you will press button one, like your normal button one. Okay. And it will write on your calculator SD, VAR, uh, REG, and all sorts. We're going to use the SD for descriptive statistics. SD represent descriptive stats. VAR represent, oh, REG will represent uh, the, uh, the regression mode and all that. We, we will do those later on. But for now, you're going to press zero Okay. for SD and your calculator will say STAT0 in front on the on the screen. Mm. And then it means your calculator is ready to capture the data. If you see where I am on the, with my mouse, let me get a pen to highlight. So there are a couple of things that you need to know about your calculator as well. Right here next to 
on top of the the close bracket there is an m plus that is the the button we're going to use to capture the data so you're going to put 10 and then you press that m plus not the plus sign but that m plus the oh we start with the 10 yes you start with the 10 so we're going to enter all of them so we first start with 10 and then you press the m plus like I said there, and your data, your, your calculator will say data set one. Then you move to the next one, six, and then press M plus, and your data set should say data set two, and so forth and so forth. You continue until you get to six, and it should say data set 12 when you are done. I'm going to stop right there because I want to demonstrate it on online. So, sorry. M plus. Don't worry, don't panic. Uh, Must you continue um, yeah, entering you, the values? You can continue entering the value. Um, if you make a mistake, mm -hmm. if you made a mistake when oh, capturing your data, you, uh, you can clear your data by pressing second function, which is the orange button and the mode button. It will clear the data that you already stored on your calculator. And then you need to start again 10 M plus, 6 M plus until you get to the end. So let me open a press. calculator. Sorry, you said to clear, we must press a uh, second. Shift, which is second function. Oh, sorry, second function and uh -huh. the mode button. OK, thank you. Let's hope. Nope, not this one. Also not this one. Okay, this is the one. Okay. Uh, I am going to close this site. Let me minimize my screen so that we have the data and I must have my calculator. Okay, so if you look at this calculator, you will see that it looks almost exactly the same as your calculator that you have, even though it, because this is an emulator, it might not be the replica of what you see in front of you. But there is my mode, there is my second function, there is my M plus, and I am going to capture my data. First, press the mode, so if I follow what I just told you to do, so if I scroll, scroll, so I said press the mode button, then press one. So if I press mode, my calculator shows more normal and stat. Then I press one for stat. And then I press zero because there it's SD line and quad. Then I press zero for stat zero. And in front, my calculator will show stat zero and then i need to capture the data so capturing the data i'm gonna start with 10 so it's 10 and then i press the m plus and your calculator should say state one or data set one and then i continue six m plus data set two five m plus data set three 10, and you must capture them in an order that you see them. M plus, data set 4, 9, M plus, data set 5, 7, M plus, data set 6, 10, M plus, 9, M plus, 6, M plus, 8, M plus six, M plus and six, M plus. And then my data is stored on the calculator. 
I can press the on and off button. And once I'm done, then I'm ready to calculate any of these measures that I see here that I need to calculate the mean, the variance and the standard deviation. Now, how do you calculate that? On your calculator, you will notice that you've got on the buttons, the, on the number button, you have letters on top that are written in green or blue, whatever the color that is in green. Like on button number four, it is X bar, which will calculate the mean, whether the mean of a population or the mean of the sample. Remember, the formula is the same. Your X bar will calculate the mean. On button number five, you will have S X. SX will calculate the standard deviation of a sample. So we will use SX to calculate the standard deviation. So for this one, we will use X bar. For the standard deviation of the sample, we will use button number five, which is XX. SX. Then on button number six, it has sigma X, which calculate your population, very, uh, not, not coefficient of variation, sorry. So population standard deviation, we will use button number six, which is sigma x, that will calculate your population standard deviation. If they ask you to calculate population standard deviation, you will press that button. So because they are written in green, then it means before we press four, we need to press alpha. It means for all these values for the mean, we first need to press the alpha. And then for, let's say we calculate in the mean, we will press alpha four, it will give us the value of the mean. So let's go and calculate that. Alpha four equals, but always remember to press the equal sign. And that answer is, you must write it, it is 7,67. I'm going to leave it at two decimal, 7,67. That is my mean. So those who are using the Casio, you must also take into consideration that um, value that I just spoke about so that we don't have to go and validate the answer again and again. So let's calculate. I'm going to skip the variance. I haven't spoken about the variance. I'm going to skip it for now. I'm going to calculate the standard deviation for the sample. Let's say we calculate him for the sample, the sample standard deviation. So for the sample standard deviation, we press alpha. You don't have to clear your calculator. You don't have to say on and off. You can say alpha and press five and then press equal. And it will tell you it is one comma. So your sample standard deviation is one comma eight seven. I'm gonna leave it at that, yes. So if you don't get if I don't get the same values as yours, it means it means, um, it means yes, it means yeah. your values are wrong. So if you, yeah. for example, you can check how many you have. If it didn't say data set twelve, so if I go alpha and I press N, I should get equal. I should get twelve. If you don't get twelve, it means there's something wrong with your data set. You if I press N, all the data. alpha N, alpha and zero. Okay. What do you get? What is your N? N zero. Twenty nine. There, that is, there is your problem. Your N should be equals to twelve. So it means you have double counted your data. You need to go and clear your data. Press second function and press mode. Second function mode and capture your data again. Okay. So that's what you will need to do. Okay, so let's calculate the population standard deviation. So calculating population standard deviation, we go alpha, 
and we press six and it will be equals to population standard deviation which is sigma x gives us one comma seven nine which is one comma eight zero i'm just going to run it off one comma eight zero okay so how do we calculate the coefficient of variation? Remember the coefficient of variation is your, your coefficient of variation is your standard deviation divide by the mean multiply by 100. Remember that. So we have our standard deviation, which is SX. So we're going to say alpha SX divide by alpha four equals. Multiply the answer by 100 equals. And that gives us our coefficient of variation gives us 24.45. Now, that is coefficient of variation. We set the coefficient of variation it is your alpha but in, but in five, alpha five, divide by alpha four equals multiply by a hundred. That's what we did to get to the coefficient of variation. Now let's calculate the variance. Since on your calculator, you do not have a variance as a button that you can calculate, but we know that, what do we know? We know that our variance, if we calculate in the variance of a sample, so let's say this is our samples x squared, the variance will be the square root. Oh, sorry, not the square root. The variance, we said the variance is the square root. Is the square root. Sorry, the standard deviation is the square root of your variance. Therefore, if we have the standard deviation and we want to calculate the variance, therefore we need to square our standard deviation. So we have our standard deviation. In order to calculate the variance, then it means we need to just square the variance, the, the standard deviation. To calculate the variance, we just need to square the standard deviation. And how do we square the standard deviation? We square the standard deviation by pressing the x squared button. On your calculator, your x squared is just there. Next to the square root, there is an x squared. So we first need to calculate the standard deviation. So standard deviation, alpha 5, give us the standard deviation. And if I press x squared, as you can see there, it's x, s x squared which will give me, if I press equal, it gives me my variance, which is my S squared of 3.52, 3.52. And that is how you calculate the values. So any question, those who are using the sharp. Are you happy? No response. So let's use our <coughs> case here. I'm going to open the case here calculator quickly so that we can do the same thing with the case here calculator. Okay, with the Casio calculator, let me remove this for now. 
so that I can have space for the cashews. So with the cashew calculator, your calculator does not have everything on there. So some of you, your calculator has the state conversion and state something. I hope your calculators look like this. If your calculator does not look like this, let me know. Uh, but they should be stat on button number one. Some calculator has some. I think it's S sum and S S var on button number one and button number two. And I hope your calculator, all of you, has that fraction button, and it looks like this. The stat is on button number one. So. For your calculator, we also need to put our calculator to state mode. You need to press the mode button and we have one for state. So you're going to press. Oh, sorry, we have two for state. Depending, you must look at your calculator where your ST, sorry, because I'm sharing my whole screen. Things like that will always happen uh, because I didn't close all my applications. OK, so. <clears throat> You must look at your calculator. What it says, you press the number corresponding to where state is. So on this one, my state is on two, so I'm going to press button number two. Then I get this other menu, which has one and one minus var. I'm going to use the one minus var, which will give me the descriptive statistics. Number two, A plus BX is your linear regression. When we do that, we're going to do number two. But for now, we're only going to use one. So you're going to press one. And you get the table. Some calculators, you get a frequency table on this side. Ignore that. We're only going to work with an X. Capturing the data here, you just press the number, the value. Let's say it's 10. And then you're going to press equal sign. Then you press six equal sign, press five equal sign, press 10 equal sign. And until you get to the end of the table, you will see when you get to the end of the table, you should have at number 12, you should be having six. So let's capture our data. 10, sorry, I must activate. 10 equal. Six equal five equal. I'm not going to say that again. Ten equal. I'm just going to capture the, the values as they are. And with the case show, you are able to see when you capture the data that you did something wrong. Easy to to solve, if I capture that one wrong, instead of 11, I instead of 10, I put 11. You use your arrows, you go one up, and you can just override that value again and say equal, it will override the value. Uh, I'm on 10, and I must have nine equals six equal eight equal six equal six equal and i can see that i am on 12 and i have six so i've captured all my data set also you can press the ac button and it goes away the table goes away the table is stored in your memory so it doesn't really actually go away anyway it is on your calculator. It is stored in your memory of your calculator. So now, to calculate the mean, the variance, standard deviation, and the coefficient of variation, we're going to use the STA. So because it's written in orange, we're going to press the shift button. So you press shift, and then you press button number one. And that will give you this menu. On this menu, one, will give us the, the type of data we just captured. We're not interested in that. Two will give us the table. If I press two for now, don't press two, it will take us to the table. If, oh, sorry, I need to go out. Then come back again, shift one. Uh, number three, 
oh, I forgot to show those who are using the Casio. If I can bring back the Casio on here, you have the sum x, the sum y, the sum y squared here, the n, and the sum x and the sum x squared. Not for today, but you do have that. So on the Casio, those sum sums that I just showed, you if you press three. You don't have to press three, so there you can see them. The sum x squared, the sum x y, oh x and y, um, sum of x and sum of x y. What we interested in is the var, so we need to press var, which is button number four. Then it gives us one for n, two for x bar, so. We're going to press button number two. We're going to press two for the X bar. We're going to press for the sample statistic. We're going to press sample standard deviation statistics. We're going to press four. And for the population, we're going to press three. So, oh, sorry. I'm... And for the population statistic, we're going to press button number four. So let's calculate the mean for now. So calculating the mean, calculating the mean, we just press two and you press equal sign. So you will just say two equal sign and you can see that we get the same value as we got with the sharp calculator. And to calculate the standard deviation, we do the same. For the Casio, you need to always press the AC button and go again, shift, one, four, and then press four again for the standard deviation and press equal. And that will give you the standard deviation. As you can see, one comma eight seven. And for the population standard deviation, AC, shift, stat, four, three, equal. And that gives us the population standard deviation. To calculate the coefficient of variation, for you, it's going to be a little bit different. So you say shift, so you will follow the same steps. Stat for, we want the sample standard deviation, which is four. You press divide by and you go shift again. Stat four and you press two and that will say S x divided by x bar and you press equal and you press multiply by a hundred so to calculate the coefficient of variation you say you say oh sorry you say shift one four you press one you press four and then you press Four again and equal, and then you press divide by, and you repeat the steps. Shift one, four, two. Oh, actually, you don't press equal. You say shift four four. So shift one four. 4 divide by shift 1 4 2 equals then you say equals and then you multiply by 100 then multiply by 100 and not the thousand a hundred and that will give you 24.45. And that is the coefficient of variation. To calculate the variance, say 
You're going to use X squared. There is our X squared button, but first we need to calculate the sample standard deviation or the population standard deviation. So let's calculate the variance of the sample. We say shift step four, four for the variance for the standard deviation, and then we press X squared, and then you press equal, and that gives you the standard, the, the variance, the variance of the sample standard deviation. So you will say, the steps you follow for the variance, shift, one, four, four, X squared button equals that will give you the variance. And that's how you use your calculator to calculate the variance. Now, both of all the steps that we have just done, I want us to look at the data set and calculate the same things that we just did right now. Using a different calculate, a different data set. So let's go to the next one. make this bigger so here we have another example exercise that we need to do so i'm going to use both of the calculators to calculate this this will take us long to capture you can ignore the first the number at the top is just a count to sh show us that there are 50 values in this calculation in this calculator or oh, in this data set that we have so you will need to capture all these values that you have here. We're not going to do it now in class because it will take us the whole hour to do that. I want you to use the same steps that you have to go and practice with your calculator to calculate all these values. We can discuss this on WhatsApp or on my UNISA today or, tomorrow or the other days. Yes. Can I assume for the question that you hear the the you just go share on number nine and nine and then off? Pardon? To clear the data, do we go shift and number nine? So yes. So to clear your data from this, you say shift. You will press nine, and it will say clear all. So which is three, and it says. Press equal for yes, because yes, we want to clear everything. And press AC or reset all by pressing AC. And there we go. So if I press shift and I press stat, it should not work because I've cleared my data. It's no longer in state mode. So with the cache, with the sharp, to clear this information, you press second function and you press CA. It clears your calculator. If I say alpha four equal, I shouldn't get any value because I've cleared my calculator. You always have to clear your calculator before you do the next calculations. So you can do this at your own own time. You can calculate the mean, the median, the mode of the data set that you have. Uh, the standard deviation, the sample variance, the, sum, the population variance, the coefficient of variation. And we can discuss the answers. You can post your answers on WhatsApp during the course of the week. And during this weekend and the course of the week before Wednesday. Because on Wednesday, we're not going to discuss this again. We continue. We're doing probabilities on Wednesday. 
So you will have time between now and then to do this. And discuss on WhatsApp or on my UNISA. Okay, so let's continue with the activities. Okay. Which one of the following descriptive statistic is not a measure? A range is not a measure of central tendency. It is the range because the range is a measure of variation. Which of the following statement is correct? Remember, you can also post on, on the chat. Okay, let's go through each statement. Which one of the following statement is correct? One, a high concentration of the data values about their central location indicates low re reliability. Remember when we were doing the coefficient of variation, we had let's go there and we said the, the variability means your data is closer to the mean or is scattered around, how far are your data scattered around the mean? We said this one is has uh, stock B is less variable than stock A because stock B has the lowest variability and stock A has the highest variability. So if, if this is the mean, so stock A will be somewhere here next to the mean and stock A will be there. So this will be B and this will be A. So stock A will be closer to the mean stock B will be far away from the mean. So let's go back to the questions. Number one, a high concentration of your data about their central loca location indicates low reliability. And the other thing you need to take into consideration when you answer this question is that Central location. Central. What are the measures of central location? We know that they are the mean, the mode, and the median. Reliability. Reliability are those measures that we get from. We calculate those. Uh, we can test the reliability of your data using the variance. We're looking for the statement that is correct. So that's number one and number two correct. Are they correct? No. Number one and number two are incorrect. Number three. The measures that are commonly used to describe the data uh, data dispersions are the range, the variance, the standard deviation, the coefficient of variation. Dispersion. Oh. 
or variation. So the measures that are commonly used to describe the data variation or dispersions are the range, the variance, standard deviation, and the coefficient of variation. Is that statement correct? Ms. Liz, as in suppose um, the range is supposed to be the mean. And then it would be correct if that's the case. Measures of central locations are? Mean, mode, and median. Okay. Measures of dispersions are? Range, variance, standard deviation, and coefficients of variation. Measures of variations are? Those ones. Going, going back. So is statement three correct? Yes. Statement three is the answer that we are looking for. The range is the difference between the lowest and the highest. That is correct because the range is highest mm -hmm. value minus the lowest value. Oh, yeah. Different means highest minus the lowest. The symbol sigma is used to define the sample standard deviation. No. No, it's that's used for population. It's used for population standard deviation. Yeah. This one is also correct. So I'm assuming they made a mistake somewhere here. Yeah. Because number four as well, it is correct. Lizzie? Yes? Uh, maybe uh, regarding number four, normally we normally say the, the highest value minus the lowest. Maybe they put it purposely, they started with lowest, so it can be correct. I'm not too sure. Does but it, it doesn't difference? really matter because it says it's the difference between the lowest and the highest. Yeah. Oh. Okay, nice. okay. Difference means nice. subtracting. Okay, okay. And I think this comes from one of the past exam paper. Hmm. Leave small to wonder. Okay. The distribution of the following data. This is the data that you have. Is this data symmetric? Skewed, binomial, or poison. What do you need to do? Order the data from lowest to highest. The first thing you need to do is calculate the mean of this data because if I look at those three answers that I have, for now you can ignore the two because at this point we haven't touched those. So you can ignore those three. So it's either one or two or three. So you need to calculate the mean of this data set. You need to calculate the median of this data set. If the mean is less than the median, we say it is negatively skewed. If the median is less than the mean, we say it is positively skewed. Symmetric. The, the data mean will be equals to the median. And that will say it is symmetric. symmetric. So first calculate the mean. Sum of all the values divide by how many there are. There are one, two, three, four, five values. What is the mean? The sum of all of them divided by how many there are? The mean is two. two. Oh. 
if you order the data, so it will be 0, 2, 2, 2, and 4, the middle value. What is your median? It's 2. Two. Median is 2. So the answer for the question? It's 1, number 1. Four. Number 1. It will be number 1. Yes. The data set is symmetric. The mode is also two. Yeah. And if they would have asked about the mode, the mm. number that appears more than the other numbers will be equals to two. Yeah. Yes, you are right. Okay. Given the symbols A, B, C, and D, those are the symbol. The population. Oh, I'm not gonna say that. Mu, S, X bar, and sigma. Identify the symbol that represent a parameter as a measure of a population. It's A. A, a is, is A a parameter? Yes. And what does it represent? A population, a population mean. Population. This is the mean, population mean is a parameter. What is B? Sample mean. What is B? Is that sample mean? Nope. What is B? The mean. <laughs> nope. What is B? Standard deviation. Standard deviation. It's what is is it a sample of population? Sample standard deviation. It's sample. Standard deviation. So is okay. this a, a, a parameter or a statistic? This is what we call a? Statistic. A, a statistic. What is C? Mm. It's, it's, what is the mean? Is, yeah. mean? Which mean? Sample mean. Sample mean. So this is sample. Sample mean, and if it's a sample mean, it is a statistic. A statistic. And D. Population. It's a population standard. Deviation. deviation. So if it's a population standard deviation, therefore it is a population. A parameter. So which option is the right one? Only A, A and D, A and C, C, C and D, and A and C. It is A and D. D. The answer is option D. Oh. When we did describing the date, the table, especially numerical data in terms of tables and charts, and we spoke about a stem and leaf plot, and I said when we deal with descriptive statistics, we will look at how the questions are posed when they give you a stem and leaf plot. Now here we have a stem and leaf diagram for days to maturity data. And we need to find out which one of the following statement is incorrect. So number one is asking the range. Let's calculate the range. What is the range? Your highest minus lowest. What is your highest value of this data set? It's 86. 86. It's 86 minus your lowest 86. value? 86. 86. What is the range of the data set? It's 15. The range is... 50. Yeah. What is the largest fifth number? 
It's 18. So we start counting from the last one and we go one, two, three, four, five. And that is our largest fifth number should be eight. There are 32 numbers here. Quickly count them. Are they 32? Yes. I got 33. Why? I got 33. 33. 33. There are 33. The mode. What is the mode of this data set? Zero. Nope. There is no zero on this data set. What is oh, the yeah. mode of this data set? There's no mode. What is the mode of this data set? 70. 70. 70. It's 70 because 70 appears one, two, three. The others are just one, two, this. One two one two. Uh, fifty one is fifty one fifty one fifty five fifty five. The only number that appears more than the other yeah. number is seventy. Seventy. Ms. The median Ms. of this data set. Yes. Can I just ask on that? If um seventy would have been twice, would have this stem and leave been a multi uh, mode? Um, yes. So okay. let's say. Let's say this was one as well. Uh, if I convert that to one, there are numbers that appear more than the others, which is 51 in this instance, 55, 70, and 71, because I converted that to one. So that would have been your mode, Before, yeah. which is multimodal. Thank okay. you. So let's find the median. Remember, because we've got so many values, 33. So let's use n plus 1 divided by 2. 33 plus 1 divided by 2 gives us 34 divided by 2, which is 34 divided by 2 gives us 17. So we can just count from, you can count from the beginning or you can count from the back and get to 17. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, sixty-four, seventeen. Therefore, that is the correct answer. The median is sixty-four. Okay, so. Based on the question that I skipped in the beginning, which is this one, which I thought is going to take us forever. If you can do this on your calculator and calculate all these values, you should be able to answer the values for the next questions that I'm going to skip, especially based on that data set like this one. Because it's going to take us forever to calculate the variance and the standard deviation, we are only left with 40 minutes. Especially because the data set has 50 records, so it's going to take us forever. And it's going to also take you forever to calculate the variance and the standard deviation of this data set if you use the formula. Remember that the formula for the standard deviation we cannot do it right now in class, so. It, sorry, the standard deviation or not the standard deviation, the variance X squared is. The sum of your observation I. Minus. Your mean squared divided by N minus one. So it means you have to calculate the mean of this data set, find the mean, 
Then take this value, subtract from the mean, square the answer. Take that value, subtract from the mean, take the answer. It will take you forever to do this if you get this kind of a question in the exam, but they will not give you in the exam. Otherwise, because this is an uh, one of. Yes. I'm not going to say it now. I was going to say it, but I'm going to skip it. Since this data set is very long, it's easy to use your calculator to capture the information and calculate the mean, the standard deviation and the variance. And that is why I'm saying let's take this. And which is that question that I said, let's discuss it on WhatsApp. Liz? Yes. Uh, early, I think last month or so, uh, I've attended a, a lecturer's class online. Mm. Uh, I think he shows us the also other way of calculating uh, a mass standard deviation using Excel. Are you familiar with it? Yes, I'm familiar with Excel, but then it's going to take you forever in the exam to use Excel. Oh, oh, so the that best way to calculate. As you can see that it's easy quickly like that. So with Excel, remember you will get your data set. Uh, sometimes you will get it as a picture and you still have to type it. Type it down. Type it down, type it down, type it down. So oh. here you type it once on your calculator and you know you're done with it. And usually one question after the other, they follow each other and you are able to do all your exercise. So use your calculators, follow the steps that we did. Oh, but okay. when we do some of the calculations now, you will see how we do them again on the calculator because the data set will be small. But I want you to take this as a practice exercise because there is a purpose why I'm doing it that way as well. And it will look familiar when you're doing your assignment as well. So that at least I would have helped you with something in your life other than just explaining some concepts. OK, so so once you have done that activity that I just showed you earlier, you should be able to come here and answer this question. Exercise six. So exercise six is also one of your um, uh, exercise that you will do on your own at your own spare time and discuss the answer on WhatsApp. OK, so let's do this one because this is the data set is very small. So I'll start with the sharp calculators. I'll capture the data. Um, the problem with this kind of a calculator, it always pops up. So let's start with the other one. I will use the sharp later on. Let's start with the case. So since my calculator is reset, I must go to mode one. Oh, not one, mode, stat, two, mode, stat, two, one. So, Casio, you press mode, and then you press, you press two, and then press one, four, one minus var so we press one and then we capture the data so we'll say one five nine equals 170 equals up until we capture 256 equal so let's go one five so those who with the sharp calculator you can also go on and calculate 159 equals 170 equals 172 192 193 
236 and I should have 14 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 I should have 15 I have 14 somewhere I kept I didn't capture the other so let's see which one am I missing I go up to the beginning 150, 170, 172, 256 equals. I still skip one. How many 201s? I think you skipped 216 two after 201. Oh, 216 equals. I don't think it's skipping. I'm getting the same error from my side, even though I added. Mine is 15. 55, 256. And I have 15 of them. So you just need to check your your question your uh your numbers you must just double check them even though you're doing it on the calculator it's always good to check double check okay so let's capture on the cashew on the shop uh I need to put my calculator to state mode. Mode one zero. And the first one was one fifty nine. One five nine. Not zero nine. One five nine and plus. Oh gosh. I need to restart this. Because I put one five. One five nine M plus one seven zero M plus one seven three M plus one I skip one seven two one seven two M plus one nine two so with the case here, it's with the sharp calculator it is going to be very difficult to see which values you captured right and which one you didn't so you will have to repeat the step twice if you're not sure about what values you've captured uh, i'm on five so one two three four five so I must do one nine three. One nine three. And plus. One nine nine. And plus. Two oh one. And plus. Two oh one. And plus. Two oh one. And plus. Two one six. And plus. Two one seven and plus two three zero and plus two three five and plus two five six and plus fifteen. Yes, so now we have both data sets on.
so we can calculate and see. Okay, so now let's answer the question. We didn't even have to do all the things that I just said you must do because if I looked at the question, it would have been much easier to do. So the first one says the number of observations, they want to know how many if we count them. You can calculate how many there are because you already know how many there are. It's 15 of them. So that should be correct. Otherwise, if you are already done with calculating, you can just go alpha and then go n and say equal. It will give you the number of how many they are. On the case show, you will do the same as well. Sorry. To, to calculate how many they are, so you have, you will know that they are 15 because you've calculated them. Or you will go and say shift stat and you will use the var which is 4 and there is your n which is 1 and that will give you how many there are. There are 15. The next question was the sum of all observations. So it means they are looking for the summation x. On, a case, on the sharp calculator, your sum x is here at the bottom on button number on the dot or the decimal on the it's sum x so you just press alpha dot equal or oh, not that alpha alpha dot what's up Alpha dot should give us the sum of x equals, and that is how much they are. 31.5. If you add all of them, plus, 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 it should give you 30 point, uh, 30, uh, 3,050. On the case here, calculating how many they are on the case here, you say shift stat and you go to the sum which is three and there is your sum x which is two and equal 30.15 so the incorrect one here it is that one value what is the range highest minus lowest so you will say it the highest value here the data is sorted in this instance you will just say 256 minus 159 and that should give us 97 that would have been correct the mean on your calculator on the case your shift stat we go to var again, which is 4. Our mean is 2. Press 2. And we press equal. The mean is 201. You can do the same with your sharp calculator. Alpha. And then we press 4. And press equal. 201. That's how easy it is and straightforward. It is. Mm -hmm. Yes. With with this question six, uh, regarding the mean, the range, and the number of observation, I know that you're trying to teach us how to use the calculator, but I've, I've used it. I mean, I just by observing it, does it mean I have to always use the calculator, or if there's no. a short way? No, there is a short way. You you can use your cal your normal calculator. I just wanted to show you the other alternative way. In in case in this question, they also had the standard deviation. Oh, okay, no. It then you can sense. just yes. So okay. if they would have asked about the standard deviation or the variance here, then you have already all your data captured. You just answer that question. 
Okay, thanks. And I think I have that kind of a question, which is not this one, this one. So on question 17, same data set, calculate the standard deviation. Easy to do. Standard deviation, remember, alpha 5 equals 26.72. 26.7, which would have been this answer. So on the sharp, on the sharp calculator, since you start your values, you say alpha, and then you press button number five, and that will give you your answers. On the Casio calculator, On a Casio, you will say shift one, and you will press four, and you will press four again. And equal. And that will give you the same answer. And for the coefficient of variation, you will do the same. You will calculate the mean divided by the, oh, sorry, the standard deviation divided by the mean is the same data. As you can see, that different question from different have the same and like you need to do different um, calculations on the same data. Okay, going back to where we were, we were on question exercise number six. We already answered six and 17 all in one. And I think that is what is going to happen as well in your assignment questions as well. You will find the table which you can answer question number one and question number two and question number three at the same time with the same information. So if you have stored your data onto your calculator, you should be able to answer all of them without redoing all the, the steps. OK, moving on to the next one. Next question. Which one of the following statement is correct with regards to coefficient of variation? Remember, coefficient of variation tells you the variability, the relative variability to the mean. It gives you the relative variability to the mean. It is always represented in percentages. And it is your standard deviation divided by your mean multiply by 100. So based on that, which one of the following statement is correct? Is coefficient of variation measures of location or central tendency? Is that correct? Am I alone here? I think the first one is correct. It's supposed to be a measure of variation. It should be incorrect. So this is not the right answer. It should be a measure of a measure of variation here. It, uh, coefficient of variation is the difference between the largest and the smallest value. So number two is also, okay. I think, incorrect. Incorrect, the correct. incorrect okay. because this is, is defining what the range is. Yes. Number three. Obviously, they have their perceptions of what South Africa is like when they've never been here and maybe behind the video overseas. But when they come here, they're like, wow, that's such so a uh, of 
Okay. Muted. Okay, is number three correct? Is coefficient of variation, is it the sample standard deviation squared? I think that one is also incorrect. This is incorrect. The sample standard deviation squared is not a coefficient of variation. Number four seems to be correct. It is number four correct or incorrect? So you're saying it seems to be correct. It is the sample standard deviation expressed as a percentage of the mean. So it is a sample standard deviation as a percentage of the mean, which is almost exactly the same thing because it is X times. So we can say it is S times x times 100. Oh, x divided by x times 100. We can just multiply x by 100. OK. So this is correct. It is a mean squared. It is not. Next question. Consider the following data set. You are given the data set. Which statement is incorrect? What is the median? You need to order the data from lowest to highest. What is the first quartile? What is the third quartile? Remember the median is the same as the second quartile. The median is the same as the second quartile. What is the mean? N is the distribution symmetric. So in terms of this distribution symmetric, use the answer for the mean and the median. Don't try and use the quartiles and all that because then you're going to have to do lots of calculation. What is my maximum minus my minimum, my quartile three? And is it less or equal to my quartile? The difference between quartile and the small quartile one and the smallest one. So those are very confusing, but you can use the median and the and the mean to find out whether the thing is symmetrical. So order the data. I'm going to also order it from my side. Three. Okay, you have time. Okay, so let's Let's do this. Quartal one, let's first find the position. Quartal two, position. N plus one divided by two. How many there are? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight. Eight plus one divided by two which is nine divided by two, which is 4.5. It's on the 4.5th position. One, two, three, 4.5 is between Are you guys here? Yes. Yes, we are here. It's between seven and nine. Nine, yes. Okay. So I'm going to add seven plus nine, divide by how many there are. 
equal to eight. It's equals to eight. So the median is correct. First quarter. N plus one divided by four. N plus one is nine divided by four. <coughs> the answer is 2.25. 2 and what do we do when it's 2.25? We estimate that the value is on. On two. On two. So we're going to count one, two. First quartile, four. So that is correct. Quarter, third quarter, we find the position by three times n plus one divided by four. four. I'm not going to repeat all of them again. So it will be three times nine divided by four. It's six point seven five. Yes. And we're going to estimate that quartile. It's seven. It's at position seven. Okay. Yeah. Count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's, it's on. Alright. Number two, boy. Is correct. I played the mean of the data set. And all of them divide by how many they are. Nine point five is correct. Nine point five. Because it is the sum of all the values divided by how many they are. Um, which is the sum of all of them is seventy six divided by eight. You will get 9.5, which means that is correct. Is the mean and the median the same? No. The median is 8. The mean is 9.5. Therefore, the data is not symmetric or the distribution is not symmetric. Consider the sample set. There's, consider a simple data set of one, two, three, four, five, and six. Which one of the following statement is correct? You must pay attention when you answer the question. That says position, that says value, and that says value. Interquartal range, remember we find it by saying the value of Q3 minus the value of Q1. So position for quart, uh, quart, uh, quartile one is n plus one divided by four. How many there are? There are yeah, six, six plus one divided by four, which is seven divided by four. What is the quartile position? 1.75. That means it's one point seven five. Remember, the first question is position, yeah? Yeah. And we're looking for the correct answer. 
So this is not correct because no. it is on 1.75. The position is 1.75. If we were looking for the value, we were going to estimate and round it up to say it is at position two, oh. something like that. But because we're not looking for the value, the position we use the same as what you have when you calculated the position. Quartile two, we need to find the position, which is n plus one divided by two. So this will be seven divided by two, which is on position 3.5. So go find the value on position 3.5. Three point five is located between two values, ne? Yes. So the value will be three plus four divided three by three plus four divided by two, which gives us three point five. Three point five. That is that should be the answer for quarter two. So therefore, this is incorrect. Number number three, the median is four. Remember, quarter two is the same as quarter two is the same as the middle one. The middle value, which is the median. So if we find that the median or quartile two is three point five. Can the median be 3.5 of this data set as well? Yes. So the median is also 3.5, therefore this is incorrect. We need to go find the value of third quarter. So first we need to find the position. 3 times n plus 1 divided by 4, so which is 3 times 7 divided by 4. And the answer of the position is 5.25. 5.25. What is the value? The value will be located at position 5, five. which is 5. Five. And this gives us 5.2, which is there. The value. So this answer should have been only 5. five. So we should get third quartile to be five. So now we need to go back to the question that uh, we answered in number one. We were looking for the position there. Now we need to find the value because we need to substitute the value into the quartile range. So with Q3 will be equals to five and Q1, our position we find it at 1,75, which means we're going to estimate it at and two. Find it at position two. two. So that will be five minus two, which gives us three. three. Which means the answer that we're looking for is option five. Right. Sure. Let's look at the last example. Okay, so this is another question that you will need to answer with once you have done that activity. Uh, oh, actually, you don't even have to do that activity. You can answer this question. It's easy. So we can do with we can do this question. So second quarter. Same as what we did n plus one divided by two. We need to find. That the second quarter is calculated as the range between 25 and 26 observation. We cannot, we cannot assume that unless if we find the position first. So the position, we find it at, there are 50 observations, mm -hmm. plus one divided by two, which is 51 divided by two. What is 51 divided by two? Is 25. Point five. Point five. Point five. Point five. So is we're looking for the incorrect one. Is A correct? 
the second quartal is calculated as the average between 25th and 26th observations. So our quarter, our position is at 25.5. Mm -hmm. So it means we're yes. going to get the value from position. The value that we will get, it will be the average of position 25 and 26. So it means this is okay. correct. Number B. B says the position of the first quartile is 13. So you need to go calculate the position of the first quartile, which is n plus 1 divided by 4. So 15 plus 1 divided by 4, which is 51 divided by 4, which is equals to? 12.75. Which is 12.75. 75. So this should be 12.75. That is the position. So therefore it means that it is incorrect. The range of the data set it's your highest minus lowest, your highest value is 20.2 minus your lowest value is 6.2. It's 14. 13.8. 14, which is it? Which is 14. So that should be correct. Four equals three times. Okay. Number D. The position of the third quartile is 38. The position is 38. So we're going to say three. Five. Uh, three times n plus one divide. By four. four. So that will be three times fifty one divided by four. When you're thirty eight point two five. Thirty eight point two five. Making D incorrect. It is thirty eight point two five. The position is. 38.25, which makes D also incorrect. Unless if they are estimating already when they're looking for that position on this answer. Um, it should be the position that we will find the value will be 13 because it's 12.75 and this one is 38.25, it will be 38. Okay, so number E, the position of the second quartile is 12.5. Let's look at the last one. So the second quartal position. Is. Second quartal, we find it or we did calculate that we said it was 20. Oh, sorry. We said it is 51 divided by 2. 51 divided by 2, which was. 25.5. 25. 25.5. So this is the incorrect one. Okay. So it means on this options, 
the position they already estimated them or rounded them off to say this is state 38 and that is 13. 13 which makes e the incorrect answer okay like with any other activities that we do because we left with two minutes there is activity 12, which should be easy for you to answer this question. There's activity 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 8. Oh, we did already 18, uh, 17, so 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 24, 25. So all of them until 25. You can do them on your own. You have the WhatsApp group or my UNISA to discuss. I have done my bit. Now it's your time to learn and ask questions and help one another as well. Um, so where did I stop? So that when I give you, when I, so from question 12, 12 until 25 plus the practice exercise. You can do them on. You can do them on WhatsApp. If you want us to give you input, you just need to ask or show us how you did some of the questions and then we can have the discussion. Otherwise, then thank you for coming going to stop right here and recap we did all the calculations remember using your calculator it's something that you need to practice you cannot do your assignment now and then forget about it and only come back again when you go write the exam um, you need to constantly practice 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 so that you get used to using your calculator it's easy once you learn the steps Go back to the recording, practice the steps as I have done them. Once you, once you, you've learned the steps, you will see that it will be easy, 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 easy to do. You can also even just every time you see a question with tables and they're asking about standard deviation, you will automatically just go in and start uh, punching in and storing the data onto your calculator. It's easy. Otherwise, thank you for coming. If there are any questions, feel free to ask. I am going to stop the recording because I don't share what we discuss after this. Uh, where is my thing to stop the recording? Any questions? Sorry, Lizzie. Uh, just to, 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 to make sure I'm at the right space. You said the recordings I can find 